Hey guys, welcome to day 24 and today we're going to be doing another really fun program called Hangman and we're going to implement it in everything and we're going to read from files, we're going to input, we're going to output, we're going to do lots of great things today. And so let's just, you know, get right into it. So we are going to open NetBeans and, you know, it's going to do its thing. And we're going to make this Hangman application very similar to our tic-tac-toe thing that we did a while back and basically it's going to have like a hangman application class that's going to be like where we run the program and everything and then we're going to have a hangman class that is going to say okay this is the logic of how we play hangman and so we'll do file new project per usual and then go next here and we are just going to call this uh, hangman application and that'll be great i'm going to save it in my desktop you know Wherever you want, you can go browse here and everything's gonna load up for us. And we're here, it's loaded. And unlike last time, we are actually gonna start in our Hangman application. Since you kind of know how this is gonna work, we are just going to create a new scanner here first because this is what's gonna scan the input. It's just gonna be a scanner SC. And we'll say this is a new scanner with system.in as what we scan. And of course, we have to import things. And there we go. Now we are gonna do a couple of print statements to explain again how do we play the game, like what's going on with the game, what's happening. And so we will do system.out.println, and this is again the instructions, what is Hangman? How do I do things? That's what this is gonna print out for us. And we are gonna say, welcome to Hangman, exclamation point, space, I will pick a word, and you will try to guess it. If you guess wrong six times, then I win. If you can guess it before, then you win. Are you ready? I hope so, because I am. So now we're kind of explaining like how does Hangman work? And so welcome to Hangman, I will pick a word and you will try to guess it. So the computer is gonna pick a word and you are gonna try to guess it by character by character. And so if you guess wrong six times, then I win. If you can guess it before, you know, you get it wrong six times, then you win. And so we are ready to play and we are gonna add another print line here to make it all you know formatted in our console and again yeah this is going to be all in our console we're not using like a window thing it's just going to be where our print statements go and such and now we're going to print out another print statement we'll go system.out.println and again it's explaining like what's going on here and so we'll say i have picked my word below is a picture and below that is your your current guess which starts off as nothing. And so we will add a little enter there to make it, you know, easy to see here. And so it starts off as nothing. Every time you, and we'll do a little enter, guess incorrectly, I add a body part to the picture. When there is a full person, you lose. So this kind of more explains what's going on. It says, I have picked a word, below is a picture, and below that is your current guess, which starts off at nothing. Every time you guess incorrectly, I add a body part to the picture. When there is a full person, you lose, and that's how it works. And we should also add character by character. So you're gonna guess like a character at a time, just so that's a little bit clearer. After this, we're saying, okay, this is how we play the game. And again, we are gonna have another Boolean here that's gonna be like, do you want to play? And so this will allow us to play multiple games. And then we'll say, while do you want to play? Then we want to keep playing. And then at the very end, we'll probably ask for a response. Again, very similar. You could actually like copy over the code if you wanted to, but we're gonna, you know, not do that because we wanna code things today. <laughs> and so we will do another system.out.println line to make it all formatted. And this will be again after we, like we're playing the game, we keep playing. And then at the very end, once we, once the game is over, either we have guessed too many times and didn't win, or we finally figured out like what the word was. Um, once we get out of this, because there's going to be another loop in here that's like, while game dot game over, 
game over. While the game isn't over, then we'll do things. But then if we go down here, once it's over, we're gonna actually print out some stuff so we can actually play another game. And so we will go system.out.println and we will say another system.out.println. And then in this one, we will say, do you want to play another game? Enter Y if you do. And so if you do, you'll enter Y just like that. And when we get this response back from the console, we'll do character response and we will say, go get the next thing and change it to uppercase. And this is something we didn't do in the last video, but you know, if they enter a like lowercase y, like it should still count as they wanna play the game again. And so we will take this next thing that's in our, you know, scanner and then we'll make it uppercase and then we will just take the first character there. And then we will say, do you want to play, which is our Boolean that allows us to play like multiple games within the same run. We can say, do you want to play? Again, is response equals equals the character Y. And so now what do we have so far? We have these print statements that say like, how do we play the game? Then we have this Boolean that allows for multiple games. And so allows for multiple games. And then we have like setting up the game and then we'll have like playing the game, playing the game and then play again or no. So that is what we have so far. But now we actually have to implement like what is Hangman? What do we actually do in these things? And so we are going to create a new Java class and it's just gonna be called Hangman. And inside of this Java class, we are going to create, what is Hangman? What do these things do? And so inside of our Hangman, we are gonna create some properties first. And so when you think of Hangman, you always think of the mystery word that it, the computer or the person that you know is the master here is thinking of. And so we'll have this mystery string. And so we'll have mystery string and we'll say mystery word. You know, it's this mystery word. We don't know what it is. And then we also have the user's current guess. And so it's how many, you know, what letters has the user, you know, figured out? Have they found the O's? Have they found the S's? You know, what, like how many letters do they have left? And so how will we keep track of that? Well, I think it's best to use a string builder. And what this allows you to do is it allows you to change characters inside of the string where you couldn't do that with an ordinary string. And so um, I haven't mentioned this before, but it's kind of super important. Strings are immutable, which means you can't, like once you say, okay, cat, that's a string you're not gonna be able to change cat into cow or something. You're not gonna be able to change the like values at those indices without creating a whole new string. So what you could do is you could create like a substring of cat and you could say, just take that first letter and then create a new string with O and W appended onto it. But you can't like change a string because it is immutable. So if you want to change like a string, then you use a string builder, which just allows it to be mutable, changeable, able to be mutated. And so inside of here, we will say current guess, and this will change and update as we, the user constantly guess new letters. And then since we're always guessing, we wanna make sure that we don't get like discounted for like guessing the same letter twice, even though like, even if that letter was in or not in, say if T is not in the word and I guess it twice, we don't want it to be like two body parts are added to the picture. So we will need an array that's like array list um, of characters. And this is just gonna be our previous guesses. And we will just say, this is a new array list. And we will add that import beautifully right there. And then we also need to keep track of like our tries. And so if like say I'm on my third try and I win, that's great. But we need to know like if we get to six tries or else we tried to guess, you know, a bunch of times we got up to six guesses and then the game's over because we, you know, we have our full body picture. And so we will actually represent that in code with int max tries. And this will be like the maximum you can get. And you could set that for anything. You can make it static if you want, but here we'll make it an instance variable. And we'll say our current try, which no matter what would be an instance. Um, and we'll say it starts off at zero. 
And lastly, we need to create a set of variables that will deal with getting stuff from a file. And so where are we getting this mystery word? Like, is it coming out out of nowhere? Are we creating it? Are we randomizing it? Well, no, we have, or while I pulled off the internet a text file that has a bunch of words, just words that are in the dictionary, and we are gonna wanna take those words, put them into an array list, and then be like, okay, here are my words. They go from, you know, one to, you know, the dictionary size, or zero to the dictionary size, and I'm gonna pick word 105, and then that's gonna be my mystery word. And so we need some variables to like pull the stuff out of the file and save it and stuff like that. And so we are gonna create an array list for all of our words and it's gonna hold type string. And it's gonna be a dictionary equals new array list. There we go. And then we are also going to have a private static file reader, reader, file reader variable, which is just gonna help us read things from the file. And again, you'll need to import some things. And then we're also going to have a private static buffered reader which is a buffer, buffered file reader. And this is just gonna allow us to parse somewhat, and we need to say reader here, and then we need to import. And basically what the buffered reader is gonna do, it's gonna be kind of like our string builder in that the string builder allowed you to kind of change like if you have the word current, you could change like the second R to O or something. You couldn't do that with a regular string unless you wanted to create like a whole new string and then take parts of the old string to make the new string. That's kind of the same idea with our buffered reader. Our file reader is just gonna, you know, get the file for us, but the buffered reader is gonna allow us to iterate through that file and take things in and out of it. And so that is why we have those variables. And then we have this array list, of course, to hold all of our words. And then we can like index them right away to get whatever, you know, word we want. And so now we are gonna finally create our constructor. And so we will say public hangman throws IO exception. And we're throwing an exception because what if our dictionary file, what if it's not there? Like, oh, that's bad. And this will not have those parentheses, and then we will add the import as well. If you have errors in your code right now, it's probably because you forgot imports, and so you should make sure you have all of the imports, which are up there, you know, they're there. And now we're down here, okay. And so the first thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna initialize streams, which is gonna be a function we'll create later, and it's gonna you know, initialize our dictionary word list, I guess you could say, that's gonna have all the possible mystery words that we could have. And so after that, we once everything's set up, then we'll finally pick our mystery word. And so we'll say mystery word equals pick word. And so we'll pick the word, everything's great. And then we also need to initialize our current guess because you notice like our array list is initialized, you know, our max try, current try, but our current guess is not. So we will say current guess equals initialize, initialize current guess. And this will, you know, make a guess for us. And we're gonna represent it a little bit weird so it can print out cool, but we will get to that very, very soon. And so after this, now we are gonna create some functions that are these that we used inside of our constructor. And so the first function that we are gonna create is a public void initialize streams. And this will initialize our like dictionary array list. Even though it is an empty array list right now, we are gonna wanna like put some stuff in it so that it, you know, has the words and so we can actually pick a word later on. And so inside of initialize streams, the first thing that we are gonna do is we are gonna add throws IO exception because this is what would cause, like this throws IO exception, so that's why our constructor has to throw IO exception. And that basically means like what if, you know, like I said before, what if the dictionary is not there? And so inside of here, we'll do a try catch thing. And inside of this, we will say file in file equals new file dictionary dot text. And let me just show you where this guy is right now. And so right now it is on my desktop, but I'm gonna link it down below. So go ahead and get that dictionary dot text link. And if I open it just in text edit here, we have all of these words. Look, there's so many words, so many words. 
you have so many words to choose from for your mystery word. And so there they are, they're very great. And so notice how each word has its own line and that is like, what that's the property that we're gonna use inside of our function. The fact that there's one word per line and once we're done with a word, then we go to the next line. And so keeping that in mind, I want you to get that file and then I want you to copy it or you can just kind of drag it in to your Hangman application. And so it'll be inside of here. The right here is great. It should just be, you know, right in there and everything will work out if it's there. And so with that there, we can move on and we're gonna need to import a lot of things sort of this file IO stuff. It's not, you know, used very often or it's not used as often as arrays are <laughs> or ints, bools, you know, you, you get the gist of this. Okay, so we have this file. Now we need to create a file reader that will actually help us, you know, read the file. And so we will do file reader equals new file reader in file. So we wanna read which file? the file that we just talked about in this first line here. And so we'll create a file reader for that. And then from there, we will create a buffered file reader equals new buffered reader file reader. Okay, so from the file reader, we create a buffer file reader that then we can like manipulate, you know, things with and stuff like that. And so we have this buffered file reader and inside of this, we are going to, the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna do string line equals buffered file reader dot read line. And so what does this do? It gets the first line of our document. And so if we open our da -da -da, dictionary dot text, this is our first word. Yeah, it's a word. So that's what this, like, we'll, we'll actually call this current line. So we have this current line thing. It's gonna return, you know, the first line here. But again, we're gonna use a while loop so that it returns like each line. And so we have this current line and we will say, while the line is not null, meaning we're not at the end of the document, then we want a dictionary dot add our current line. So we wanna add this word to our dictionary. And this is gonna be current line because we changed the name and so, what this says is I'm gonna create this in file thing. I'm gonna have this file reader that then grabs, you know, lets me read it, and then this buffered file reader that allows me to like parse through the document. Then this current line thing that's gonna allow me to iterate through the file and add each word to my dictionary. And then at the very end here, we will then close our file or our buffered file reader dot close. It's always good to close these guys or else they can cause problems sometimes. And so dot close, it means we're done using it. And so why not close it? And so with every try, you need a catch. And this, what we're catching is the I, O exception, E. And then inside of these curly brackets, we first need to spell catch right. Um, we are just gonna print out system.out.println could not init streams. And so if you know the document's not there, we will print out this print statement and we do not need this extra bracket there. And so great, now we have something to like initialize our dictionary array list up here. And so we now are going to do our pick word method, which is gonna be public string, cause we're returning the word. Um, and it's gonna be called pick word and it's not gonna take anything. And basically we are just going to return a random, you know, word from this new dictionary that we created. So we'll have random rand equals new random. And then we'll have our int word index and we'll go get a random number that will work for us as an index. And that'll be math.abs rand.nextint. And then we'll mod that with the size of the dictionary. Size of the dictionary. And then we will go and get that thing from the dictionary. So we will say return dictionary.get the word index or the thing at the word index. And so we will have to import random because it's not gonna know what that is. But um, yeah, so now we have this random word. The last method that we haven't done yet is initialize current guests. And so we will say public string builder, and this will just be initialize current guests. And it will take no parameters. And inside of here, we will do a string builder current equals new string builder. And we are basically, what we wanna do is we want it to look like this thing. Like remember how you, and your friends used to play hangman and you used to do it like this where you have all of these slots and then like say an A is here 
and you have these spaces in between, that's what we want our current guest to look like. So every other is gonna be a space, and, and at the very beginning, everything is gonna be this dash besides the spaces. And so to do this, of course, we are gonna iterate through this mystery word because we know how long this is gonna be. It's gonna be twice as long as the mystery word because we have the spaces in between each you know, slot. And so inside of here, we will go for int i equals zero, while i is less than mystery word dot length times two, because we want it to be twice as long with the spaces, and then i plus plus each time. We will say if i mod two is equal to zero, then we are gonna do current dot append. Append is what you use to like add something to a string builder. And you can look in the documentation for this as well. And so we are gonna append this, you know, underscore thing, because we want the first thing to be a little, you know, underscore thing, and then every even one after that to be an underscore thing as well. And so otherwise, we are just going to append a space. And we do need to append the space in order for this to work. And then at the very end, we will just return current, and everything will be great. Now, what is this picture? We talked about a picture showing up inside of our hangman. Like here we say below is a picture and below that is your current guess. What is this picture? How are we gonna display hangman? Well, I created an adorable little image that we are going to put inside of here. And it's all gonna start off with a draw picture function. And so we'll say public string draw picture and it's just gonna return a string based on what uh, try you're on. And so if you're on try zero, then you're gonna get a picture without a body or head or person. But if you're on like your fifth try, you're gonna have like a full body there. And so I, you know, was nifty and copied and pasted things. And so here we are, we will add these guys to everything. This is what we want it to look like. If you forget the dash ends, and stuff like that. This is the formatting we want. We kind of want a pull that's gonna hold up our thing here. We have this pull here, and then we have this thing, and then we have this guy right here. He's over here. He has this little line, his head, his dash, his dash, his body, his dash, his dash. This is like the full picture. If you're like, if, you're lo if you've lost, then this is the picture you want. But what if you lost a leg? Then you could do that, and then just add a space, and you're great. This is like how we're going to display our guy. He's going to be on this little pedestal thing and he's going to be or on this little rope thing and yeah. And so to do this, we are going to have a switch case inside of our draw picture because obviously we don't want all of these, you know, pictures inside of one function. And so we will say switch current try and we are going to say if we are on our zero, you know, our zeroth try, meaning that we haven't gotten anything wrong yet, we will return no person draw. And because these are a return, I don't need to put breaks inside, and so that's great. And I spelled case wrong. <laughs> and then, of course, we haven't created a no person draw function yet, but we will, and so we will implement that later. And then we will say case one is going to return a add head draw, whatever that returns. Again, it's gonna be a different picture. Then case two is going to return a add body draw, so we'll say return add body draw. And then case three is going to return an add one arm draw. And then case five, we're almost there, return add second arm draw. And then we'll have a default. So if it's not any of the other ones, then you've lost. And so we will say return full person draw. And so now we have to implement all of these functions. And so we can actually just do this whole create thing here and it'll create all of the functions for us. And they can be private, that's fine. And so by pressing these buttons, you could do this yourself and like write it in, but we are not gonna do that because this is gonna be so simple. And so again, I could go to tools and templates and change this, but you know, that will be another day. And so we are just going to actually copy this up and go down here and figure out what we wanna do here. And so, we are gonna take away all these comments again. And I'm gonna put this little drawing inside of the description and so you don't have to try to figure out what this is. Then I'll put the full body in there and so you can just like copy and paste this from the description and start working with it like I am. And so what do we wanna do with the string? Well, we want to return it. 
And so we have the string that we just made. It's going to do all of the formatting for us because we have these dash in characters which allow us to go to the next line. So since this is a no person draw, then we don't want the head. We don't want, you know, any of the body stuff. We, we have no body. We have nothing. And so we just have this line here and it's there. And so you could have the line not there. It doesn't really matter. And so now we will take away this one and look how simple that was. That was great. We're just returning a formatted string. And so with the add head, we don't have any arms yet. We don't have any, you know, none of this yet, but we want to keep the next lines. And so it, you still can get all of these dashes for the pole that's like holding up this thing. And so again, getting rid of all of this extra stuff, but we have our head. And then now we will draw our body and we will just, you know, paste that in there. And we will say return this thing in our body. We are not gonna have any legs. We're not gonna have any arms. So we'll take those away. But we'll make sure all of our, you know, body is lined up perfectly there. But our dash ins, you know, or our slash ins do not have to line up because they go to the next line. And so it's like, oh, I'm already on the next line, you know. And so now we have another arm and we're keeping everything from the last round. And so it's kind of important to notice. And so we will start off with that arm on our left. And so we won't have any legs yet, but we'll still have our body intact. And then we will delete this guy and we will say second arm draw, enter that guy. We will return this thing, put some spaces in there we go we draw our second arm and we have to have these like two slashes here because if i don't put that it's going to be mad because there's an illegal escape character and so this first one is the one that's going to show up inside of our print statement and the second one is just there to say oh this is the actual character i want i don't want to like escape this program and then we have our full person draw and we will just give that you know the whole thing that we have here so we won't have to change anything, which is fantastic. And of course, both of our legs can't appear at once, which means I made a mistake. And I forgot case three up here. So we'll say case three and we'll move a couple of these up. Um, yeah, so we'll move this guy up here. We will say this guy, the second arm is gonna be, you know, added when we're at try four. And then we will say add first leg draw and then we will let that guy make the method we'll go down here and we will just you know take this whole part because we already know what we're drawing we're just adding another leg and so we will return this string here and it's all already good for us and we are only going to want the left leg first and so we just deleted the other leg and if we wanna make this super nice and formatted, I'm gonna move this up here so it makes sense in ordering and stuff. And so now we can actually draw our hang person inside of the console. And so one more thing that we're gonna do so before we can actually run it is we are going to say, or really code how to like show your current guest to the user. And so to do this, we will actually do it right above our draw picture here and so to do it we will go public string get formal current guess and inside of here we will return current guess and then we will add on our current guess dot to string and so this will allow us to return our current guess but in a string format and it's going to be in the same like underscore, underscore A, underscore, underscore B, or whatever, you know, the word is. I don't know a word that's, you know, like this, but if you wanna put it down in the comments, I seriously don't know though. I'm not trying to give you a riddle or anything. Um, so yeah, now we can go back to our hangman. And inside of this, you know, setting up the game here, we are going to add another print statement that's like, da -da -da, print Ellen. And it's gonna say, all right, let's play. Because, you know, we want to play. And so first we will create a new hangman game. And so we'll do game equals new hangman. And that'll set up all of our streams and everything, which will be fantastic. And then instead of doing this while here, we're actually going to do a do while. It's a little bit cleaner. 
because um, it allows you to not copy code, which may become more apparent in a minute because then you would have to like print out the beginning of like how you want the board to look like and then you would have to play the turn and then print the you know thing again in the while but this allows you to just make it more concise and more you know formal nice and pretty elegant yeah and so inside of here we are actually going to do a system dot out dot print all in and we are going to draw the things and so inside of draw the things we're actually going to draw the things and so here it says get below you're gonna get the picture and the current guess, and that is what we're going to do here. And so we will system dot system dot out dot print ln, and we will do game dot draw picture. And our current try should be set at zero, so it'll be you know the zero picture. And then we'll do another you know print line here, and we will system dot out dot print ln our current guess. And so we will do game dot get formal current guess, and so that will print it right out there in the console for us. And if we're super sneaky, this is, you know, this is how you cheat in Hangman. We're gonna system dot out dot print ln game dot. Oh, look at that. We can access our mystery word. So we don't really need to play the game to figure out what the mystery word is. We can just, you know, print it out right there. And so we're gonna do that right now just for testing and seeing what's happening issues and stuff like that. And so here we need to also add this throws IO exception because it could come all the way up to our main class and we need to spell exception correctly, <laughs> of course. And so we also need to import it, save it, save it over here. And then we are just gonna add a trivial game over thing here. And so our game over is just gonna be false so that our for loop only goes one time. And so we will add it actually up here so it's easier access. And so we will just do a public Boolean game over. And we are just gonna have this trivially return true because we say not over inside of our hangman application. And we will actually add some uh, new lines inside of here. And so it can, you know, be nice and pretty inside of our console as well. And so we'll just add that and then we will add a new line inside of there and perhaps here to, you know, making it all great and stuff. And one other thing that we forgot to do was go into our hangman here. And when we did dictionary.add current line, we also need to make sure we increment the current line. And so if we do current line equals buffered, buffered file reader dot read line, like it will allow us to go to the next line. And so these are, you know, little tests. Did you, did you know, did you not know about my, you know, errors cause coding. And so here it allows the while loop to finally get out of it. And so now when we run it, we, we get this thing and it returns, you know, it just has its one turn and then returns. And so we say already let's play and then we do our things and our formatting turned out weird and so I am actually going to delete that, you know, thing character by character. We'll add a period here. And then we will say a new line right there because it looks good for us. And then we will also have in every time we won't have that space. And then we won't need this new line here, I don't think. And so we will take that away as well. And then it looks like we need another print line here, system.out.println, just so it's nice and pretty. And then we also probably need one right before we do our draw picture as well. Print ln. And we drew it twice, and so we need to delete this first one. There we go. And so now if we get rid of the console-ness down here, there we go. Now we have a function and inside of here, we first say, how do we play Hangman? And then we say, we allow a functionality for, for multiple games. And then we say, okay, we're gonna play. And then we print out our first picture and then our formal guess. And then while the game's not over, keep going. And then otherwise, do you wanna play another game? If you do, we'll go to it. And so now we gotta figure out how do we even play this game? So now we play the game. And so how do we even do this? Well, the first thing we're probably gonna to wanna to check is we're gonna to wanna to get the guess. And so 
Here we're gonna say get the guess. And how do we get the guess? Well, we need to tell the user to put in a guess. And so we will add another system.out.println line here. And so we will say system.out.println enter a character that you think is in the word. And then we'll grab this character, character, by going char guess equals sc.next dot two lowercase. And so they're all like every, like an uppercase A and then a lowercase A, it's the same guess and it's counted as the same number. We'll do that dot char at zero. There we go, so we have this guess. And then we'll do another system.out.println. And then we will check if this guess, check if the character really is guessed already. So has this thing been guessed before? And so we will add some space here. And so we will check, so we'll say if game dot is guessed already. And we will create a function that does this inside of our hangman. If it's guessed already, then we wanna print out a message saying, hey, you should try again. So we'll say, try again. You've already guessed, guessed that character. And then we'll add a linear semicolon there. And then we'll allow them to have the guess equal a sc dot next, you know, dot two lowercase, and then close that and then getting the char at the first thing. Okay, if it hasn't been guessed already, if we got past this if, and this should really be a while, so it's like you're continuously guessing until the user provides a guess that is good for you know our game and that it isn't one that has been guessed before. So if that is true, then we will play the guess. And so we will say if game.playguess guess. And basically this thing it isn't created yet, but it's going to return a Boolean that's going to say if it's a good guess or a bad guess. And so a good guess is like a character that is in the word. A bad guess is a character that is not in the word. And so if it's a good guess, then the if like inside the if will execute and we will say system.out.println and we will say great guess. Guess that character is in the word. Da, da, da. And then otherwise it wasn't a good guess. And so we'll say else system.add.println. Unfortunately, that character isn't in the word. And so sad face for you. And so we will take away that comment. We will add play the guess. And inside the play the guess, it will also update if the game is over. And so that's fantastic. And so we don't have to worry about checking those conditions. And then we'll add a little comment here saying, keep playing until the game is over. And then now all we have to do is create these last two functions inside of our hangman. And so inside of hangman, we need these two functions and we probably should do um, is guest already first. And so we will go down to say here, we'll say, public, oh, we also have to do game over because right now it trivially returns true. So we will say public is guessed already and this will return a Boolean. And we just need to check if this guess, which is a character that it's going to take, is it in our previous guesses? And so we'll have previous guesses dot contains our object guess. And we will just say, if it contains it, then we'll return true. If it does not contain it, then we'll return false because we haven't guessed it already. And so every time we guess, we're gonna add something to this previous guesses variable here. And so that's it for that function. Now we will do our play guess. And so that will be a public Boolean play guess. And it's gonna take a char guess. And we are going to actually play this guess. And to do this, we will create a Boolean that's is it a good guess? And we will set it to false at first. And we're gonna iterate through the entire Mr. Word seeing if our guess is equal to any of the letters. And if so, changing that like space inside of our current guess to the letter that we're guessing because we're, up we're updating our guess basically. And so inside of here, we will do for int i equals zero. 
all the way up to the mystery word dot length. So for each letter inside of the mystery word, we want to check if it's equal to the thing that we're guessing. And so if it is, then it's a good guess. If not, it's a bad guess. And if so, if we do have this guess that is like A and the second letter in our mystery word happens to be A, then we want to update our current guess as well. So lots going on in this function. So we will say if mystery word dot character at I is equal to our guess, meaning, you know, our A's match up, like I said before, and then we want them to say current guess dot set the char at I times two, because remember we have the spaces and we want to set that index to our guess. And so we cannot do this with strings. We can only do this with string builders, which is why this current guess is a string builder. And so besides this, we are also going to set um, our is it a good guess equal to true because we have something equal. And then we also need to add this guess to our previous guesses. And so we will say previous guesses dot add our guess here. And because we know our care, like our guess is already like dot two lowercase, it's all, all of that going for it. We know that this is going to be good to go for us. And then at the very end of this function, we will check if is it a good guess. So if it's a good guess, then we don't want to do anything. If it's not a good guess, then we want to add something to our current try because that means we've used one of our tries because we didn't, we got our guess wrong. It wasn't, our guess like character was not inside of our mystery word. And so after that, we will just return, you know, our Boolean that we've been working with all of this time. We will return, is it a good guess? and then capitalize that G and we are good to go. And so that is play guess. Our last function here is game over. And so inside of here, we're gonna have a little bit going on and basically we're gonna have two helper functions and we're gonna say if we did we win, then we're gonna do something else. If we did we lose, Otherwise, we keep going and we do nothing. And so if we won, then we want to print out a new line. And then we are going to want to like print a congratulations message. And so we will say system.out.println. We will say congrats. You won. You guessed the right word. And that'll be it. And then did we lose? If we lost, then we want to print out like a sad message. So we'll add a new line like we did for the other one. And we will say system.out.println. Sorry, you lost. You spent all of your six tries. The word was, and then we can add our little mystery word in here. So we can share what our mystery word was to the user, but not until the very end here. And because this returns a Boolean, we are going to want to return true if we either lost or won. And so we'll return true. You could also, instead of doing the return true, return true, you could say at the very end here, we could return did we win or did we lose. But we're not going to do that here. And so now we just need to implement these two functions. We will say public Boolean did we win. And so how do we know if we won? Well, we need to compare our current guess with our you know, mystery word. And so we are actually gonna create a function that's gonna get a condensed version of our current guess because right now it's in the form of you know, a, you know, with these spaces in between and we wanna condense it down so where it's just like a C, B or something like that. And so yeah, we are gonna create a get condensed current guess function and then once we have like our condensed guess, we will return guess dot equals mystery word. And so if they're equal, then this will return true, which means we won, we got the real word. Otherwise we, you know, we either lost or we haven't won yet and the game is still going. And so to create this function, we will just do public string get condensed current guess and it's going to have access to our current guests and so that will be fine and inside of here we will do string guess equals current guess dot to string 
So we're, you know, converting our guess from the string builder to the string. And then inside of our string, we are going to replace every instance of space with, you know, the empty string. And so we're going to take out all of the spaces. And then we are actually going to return this guess. And so we will just say return this guess without the spaces. And so now we'll go down here to our up here to our did we win and we're all good but now we still have our did we lose and so we'll say public did we lose function and this will return a boolean and it will take nothing and inside of here if we know how do we know we lost well we had too many tries and so we will say return current is greater than or equal to the max tries and so this doesn't isn't just current it's current try and so if the current try is greater than or equal to the max tries, then we have lost and so we will return true as well. And we still have some errors up here because we return true if we won or if we lost, but we need to return false, meaning the game is not over if, you know, we didn't win or lose yet. And so we will save that. That looks good. We'll come back here. And we didn't call it is guest already. We called it something else, which we can find out if we do the dot here. And we could say is guest already and it's because we didn't enter our guests and so there we go we will run it and see if we did things correctly and so it says welcome to hangman i will pick a word and you will try to guess it character by character if you guess it wrong six times then i win if you can guess it before then you win are you ready i hope so because i am i have picked my word below is a picture and below that is your current guess which starts off as nothing and that's good because that's you know our current guess nothing Every time you guess incorrectly, I add a body part to the picture. When there is a full person, you lose. And so here it is, enter a character that, so we know E is in it, so we'll say E. Great guess, that's in the word, and notice it put it in the two spots. Now we'll guess like T. Great, T's in the word, what about B? That's not in the word. B, it says, unfortunately that character isn't in the word and we got the circle here. What about Z? Unfortunately that character is not in the word, so we got the body. Let's do M. And notice we have this great print statement, so we know what this mystery word is. And then we have A, we have R, then we can guess N, we could guess U, bad again, we could guess I, and then we just need the S here. And then it says, congrats, you won, you guessed the right word. Awesome. The character is, you know, that's in the word and we're good to go. We will play another game and we will try to lose this game. How, how would anyone get these words? Like what is in this dictionary? Okay. And so we will just do like Z, T, then we'll try T again. And it says, try again. You've already guessed that character. And so then we'll try, you know, I don't know, E and that's not in the word. U, T, we already guessed it. So we should try again. What about H? That's in the word. Um, what about B? That's not in the word. What about U is in the word? And we already guessed it. So we'll add an A, we'll add an F. Oh, we don't want to win this. And so we will add a P and then we just need one more X. And so it says, you, sorry, you lost. You spent all of your six tries. That was the word. Do you want to play again? Again, you could play another game if you wanted to. Now, one thing we did forget to add is that if I guessed a letter um, that didn't end up being, you know, inside of it, like if I if I go back to our da -da -da, play guess, um, here we only add the guess if it matched one of our, you know, current things. And we actually want to move this outside of our for loop. We want to, no matter what, add the guess because once once you play the guess, you know, it's done. That's it, because you already have checked if it is, you know, guessed already. So that's one more thing that we kind of messed up, you know, is added now. And so that's it for this video. The Hacker Rank Challenge is down below in the description. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on this video. I hope you learned something and I will see you tomorrow.